So today I want to talk about the simulation argument, which is the argument that uh, you probably heard before from Elon Musk or something like that, about how we are probably living in a simulation. And the argument goes something like this. We are advancing in our capability to simulate worlds, for example, in virtual reality, or just to run a simulation on a computer. And you can make that simulation as realistically as possible to actually mimic the experience that happens in your brain and the things that you observe. So the idea is, in the future, we might be able to turn an entire planet into a computer and have that entire planet devoted to simulating what is called ancestor simulations, which is devoted to simulating what happened in the past or simulating a human living in our world. Okay, so the idea there is you can make a lot of those simulations. So you can, um, as uh, technology advances, you're going to have a lot of these technological resources, uh, computational resources, and you can devote at least a small set of them to making uh, ancestral simulations. If those ancestral simulations are really good, I wouldn't really be able to tell the difference if I am in one of those simulations now or not. But let's say there's going to be 20 of those ancestral simulations, at least, or maybe a hundred, or maybe a thousand. Well, out of those thousand, only, like, if you were to say, okay, well, what is the chances that I am in the real one, base reality, versus what is the chances that I'm in one of those simulations? Well, there's a thousand of those simulations. And if you would feel the same as you feel now in any one of those simulations, then the probability that you're in base reality and not in the simulation, that's like one in a thousand, or one in a thousand and one. So the idea goes that, well, most likely, you are in one of those simulations. So th there's three different possibilities, or three different assumptions. One, that a simulation can reproduce your experience. This is uh, called substrate independence, meaning that your consciousness can be replicated in a simulation, roughly speaking, or to some degree. Two that technology will keep advancing, so the assumption is technology is not going to stagnate or going to stop advancing, or maybe we will go extinct. The third assumption is that people will be devoting some of their technological power to making ancestral simulations, okay? So these are the three assumptions that go into saying that, okay, well, maybe we live in a simulation. So somehow, for me, this argument seems a little bit... It makes me uncomfortable because it seems like you were able to know something that we are in a simulation you're basically proving it without being able to actually measure it so if you want to know something for me my intuition is you have to look and get maybe a direct signal that we are in a simulation for example the signal could be if you're wearing a virtual reality headset maybe you can remove it and see something different but here the argument is saying something else so i think i want to point out some of the flaws or the ways around this argument that says that maybe we don't know if we are living in a simulation or not. I want to turn around this argument and say, well, if we live in a simulation, what is the probability that this simulation is the same as base reality? So this is where the argument starts. The assumption that we can make computation and we can make virtual reality and we can technologically advance, all that argument depends on things that you observed about our daily life, or what we would call the real world. So you observe things in our real world. Then you're applying those things, like that computational power and uh, physics of computation and the neuroscience and all of that. You're applying those ideas. You're assuming that base reality is like that. So we're assuming that in the simulation argument, if you read the paper by Nick Bergstrom, I think, if you read that paper, you will see that the assumption is that we live in a reality that is similar to base reality. So you're, you're saying that whatever the real world is, is similar to us, and you're using arguments from our world and applying it to the world that initially started the simulation. So here, already there, you're using something that you don't have access to. My issue with the argument is we don't actually have access to whatever real reality is, if whatever that is, if we're living in a simulation. So we can also say, if we or a civilization made a, like us made a simulation, we're going to make a lot more fake worlds like uh, computer games, porn, whatever. We're going to make all those other different worlds 
that don't necessarily look like us, they're going to have a different physics because you're going to just play around with the way um, uh, physics feels. So you can simulate alternative worlds. So why would you just stick to simulating that ancestral world? So what is the likelihood that we are, if we are in a simulation, what is the likelihood that we are in a like a very similar copy to the real world? We don't know. If we live in a simulation, then we are probably in something that is different from what whatever base reality is. And so you can't use physics and all the knowledge that you know from this world and apply it to whatever the real world might be. So that's one issue with the argument. The other issue is if, if I take the argument and I like push it to its logical conclusion, it's mentioned actually in the paper also that so th this issue is related to the fact that there is a finite amount of computational power in a certain region of space. So at least if we take the physics that we know, it's not well developed physics, but we have in quantum gravity or quantum mechanics, people say that there's a finite amount of information that you can put inside this room. So it's finite and there's a finite amount of computation that you can do in this room. So if, you, if I make a universe within a universe, like if I turn this room into a computer and I try to simulate the outside of the world, I have to do it at a lower resolution. I can't simulate the world with every detail with only this room, because this room is contained within the world, within the universe. So if actually space is infinitely divisible and you can do infinite computations inside a region of space, then maybe you can simulate the entire universe within a room. So this would be like a fractal, like you have the entire universe, inside of it you're simulating that universe, and inside of that there's another simulation. But you can only do something like that if you have infinite computational power. But if that process ends, you can't simulate universe within a universe within a universe within a universe. There's, that process will end. So if we were to take the same simulation argument and say, well, okay, so we already established that if we keep advancing and produce ancestral simulations that are good copies of whatever is happening to us now, well, there will be a lot of simulations. And these simulations are going to be, say, close to the real world. Then you take those simulations, within them, whatever computational power you have, things are progressing, they're progressing to where we are now, and we're going to maybe advance to become civilized, like different kinds of civilizations, and uh, that produce simulations within simulations. And then that process will repeat, but it can't keep repeating on forever. So you might ask, in a similar way to the argument, the simulation argument, which level of simulation are we in? Well, the argument says, well, we can't be in best reality because there's less of those. But you can apply that argument at every level. And so if we are in a simulation, we have to be at the final possible level. So within that, for some reason, the simulations that are within simulations, within simulations, these, because they multiply, there's so much of them. And so if they exist, we are probably in one of those and not closer to base reality. So that means those simulations, where they stop, they have a very small computational power. So you can't make basically very big civilization level simulations within those simulations. So this is what I would ask. If we are in a simulation within simulation within simulation, why do we have computational power to do all of this? Is this just an illusion? Like when I run my computer, is it really giving back results? Is it really running like 100 gigabytes of computation? Or am I just being faked and the calculation is actually low resolution? So if we believe that all the computers that we're running right now, they're really running and they're doing all their computation, for some reason, if we are in the simulation, we might be in a state where we can't produce uh, ancestral simulations. But if we can't produce ancestral simulations because we're at this level, the final level, well, this invalidates the initial argument, which is the initial argument started by taking our world and extrapolating from there to what the base reality might be and then concluding, bec saying bec because we are going to be able to produce these simulations, then they must have been produced and we must be inside a, a simulation. But this is a contradiction. Okay, so another thing that is actually mentioned by the person who wrote this paper, I think uh, I heard him in an interview say that he doesn't think we live in a simulation and the reason is, is one of the three assumptions that are in the paper, that people will be trying to make ancestral simulations. That might not be true. Like, maybe 
civilization advances in a thousand years and people will have different interests and they just move on. They will not be trying to reproduce whatever we have here. They will not be trying to reproduce things. Uh, they, will not, they will not be somebody who is trying to work hard to fake, to fool you into thinking that you're alive. So that, that might be true, but whatever he might be producing might be different from whatever the real world is. So maybe when technology or civilization advanced into thousands of years, they will not be trying to pre reproduce life on Earth. Maybe. So that, that's one thing that would explain why we don't live in a simulation. So I want to end by saying, whether we do live in a simulation or we don't, we don't know. And we may not have access to that, but maybe, maybe there are some ways that we can test if we are in a simulation or not. But even the ideas of do we actually live in a simulation, what does that even mean? Let's say I'm inside this computer. Like I'm just, whatever, there's electricity moving and uh, there's bits of the computer moving around and doing some computation and somehow that's producing whatever we experience. Well, that would still be real. Well, whatever we would be experiencing is the motion of those bits and the electricity in those bits. So whatever we're experiencing would still be like motion of parts and whatever. Our perception will not be, we will not perceive that reality. Like when we walk around, we see cars, we see chairs, we see things that we perceive them in a certain way that's convenient for us. We perceive space, we perceive time. And those notions might be simulated in some non-trivial way, or they might be simulated or they might be like, of course, our sensations might correspond more directly to the real world. But in either of those cases, what I'm trying to say is in some sense we already live in a simulation. We're, there's already motion of things, there's already a reality that we don't really perceive directly, that we perceive indirectly. We uh, try to discover things about it by finding correlations and uh, laws about the things that we observe. But the actual reality, we don't observe directly. So that actual reality, in some sense, might be just motion of bits in a computer. And you would say, oh, we live in a simulation. Or it might be the motion of quarks, wherever those are, and the subatomic particles, and all of that, whatever that actually is. That's a, something that might be running a simulation that we are in. So in, what I'm trying to say, in some sense, the question that whether we live in a simulation or not is not really a straightforward one. And see you next time.